This is the Middle Earth Philosopher, where I talk about ideas, people, and events that happen within Middle Earth from a philosophical perspective that may have existed in that world. Today I want to talk about Numenor, and how I think that their existence, or at least part of their existence, was a mistake. They were the descendants of the people who had fought on the side of the Valar at the end of the First Age. As reward for their suffering, they were given larg longer lifespans, better education, and technology from which to better their civilization. The Numenorians used this technology to advance further and explore farther than anyone else before them. They blended the knowledge of the divine with their thirst for knowledge that was common to their race. The only ban was that they could not go west. However, they did pass on their knowledge to the rest of humanity in Middle Earth proper and created a merchant empire that set up colonies as well. However, as the generations passed, they became more militant because of their fear of death. This fear begins to corrupt them over the generations. However, they still become so powerful that no one can defeat them, even Sauron, which leads to his capture. Still, Sauron was intelligent and his cunning was even better, and he uses this to corrupt the Numenorians further. Finally, going so far as to convince them to make war on the Valar, which leads to their destruction. The first time I read the Cimmerillion, the Numenorians captured my imagination. And there was one big question that came to my mind as I finished reading that chapter. And that question was why? What would drive a race so advanced in technology and so long lived to then risk that by going to war with the very people who had given it to them in the first place? People who were divine and all-powerful. As I thought on this, I think it had a lot to do with their human nature. Human nature was to develop and advance, and not just be powerful and content like the elves often did. A perfect example of this was the Vanyar, who were considered the ultimate expression of elven grace and perfection. They sat at the foot of the Valar at all times since the beginning of the First Age, and were considered the best of all the elves. Yet, they were so apathetic to the needs of others, even their own kin, that they pretty much didn't care about anyone else unless the Valar had ordered them to. In other words, daddy's favorite. However, the longer lifespans of the Numenorians and, and allowed them to explore Middle-earth to a larger degree, previous or since. They were never at rest with the rest of the world. Their drive was aggressive and industrious, and this, blended with the long life that they had, made them the strongest power in the world. They were never enough to defeat the Valar of Valinor, but it would have been enough to damage it, or at least that was the fear, and the Valar were not going to risk that. However, the Numenorians' hunger for immortality wasn't going to be satiated either, and something had to be done. But I think the problem wasn't just a physical one of wanting to live forever. I think it was more of a spiritual or a quasi-spiritual. The key factor was their phobia of death but not in a way that I think most fans think of. I'm going to approach it from a different angle. I think it's how it relates to the divine plan for the world. It's been a long-standing issue that had been asleep up until that point. The Numenorean ancestors and the elves never really got each other. Both were perplexed by the strangeness of each other's existence. Humans die and elves do not. Generations can same to serve the same elf lore while the lives of their allies seemed less than fleeting to the elves. This gap was even further widened by the human perception of the Lords of the West. Based on their experiences with Morgoth and the reluctance of the quote-unquote good guys to get involved until the 11th hour, they either believed not in the Valar or they were considered irrelevant, even after their intervention at the end of the First Age. However, war kept that, those existential questions at bay. So there was a lingering distrust despite the gifts of the Valar, but it was asleep for a time. But the, the rebellion of Numenor reawakened that hostility, and Sauron merely capitalized on it because these things were happening before he even arrived there. At the heart of it was the perception of reality. Humans just don't have the sixth sense of time like the immortals did. What they did have, they didn't understand. Like someone standing at a beautiful lake, and kind of feeling something, but not knowing quite what it is. Longer life exposed them to the deeper mysteries of the world, something they were not made for, and that exposure made them addicts, and yes, I'm calling the Numenorians drug addicts. 
elves were seen as having the ability to control aging, and that they weren't forthcoming to their quote-unquote friends was taken personally by the Numenorians. They didn't understand that that information was not being withheld, but simply they didn't know how to convey it to them, because no elf or Valar ever really understood humanity or their mortality, much less ones who were blessed with divine gifts. It was a Pandora's box, and Valinor would have driven them mad and also sped up their mortality. So here's the harsh reality as I see it. Numenor was a mistake, not a mal malicious mistake, but one from lack of understanding. It was a contradiction of Middle-earth that was made visible and tangible, immortality and mortality, and their relation to each other. The island and the knowledge that was given to the Numenorians itself was fine, but the mistake was a longer lifespan. The fall of Numenor would have happened without Sauron's help, and he just sped up the process. Long life and the band was like dangling a carrot before the horse, and the Yuvatar was the only one who could resolve that issue, because death was part of his larger plan. A plan that Numenor was now threatening to damage, if not completely sabotage. Numenor directly challenged the will of God, so therefore only God could respond in time. Despite the global destruction and cataclysm that took place, there were still survivors, both from the island and in the colonies on Middle Earth proper. But the political, political alliances were mixed. Those faithful to the West, or who just want to live peacefully, lived in the West of Middle Earth, while those still serving Sauron largely lived in the East or in the South. They still felt the fear of death, but no longer actively sought to undo it, as if they could. The fear seems to have disappeared at the last of that generation, when they die out. Was it from hard lessons passed down? Was it because they were too busy establishing Gondor and Arnor? Or was it war with the vengeful Sauron? Who's to say? Yet, the larger existential conflict between mortals and immortals disappears into the shadows of myth and legend along with Numenor itself. And future generations of humanity will never know just how close their race came to the limitations of their own mortality.